is <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is. That's that's just has no dignity. That's her webcam girl pose. OK, well, things got a little weird now. Oh, OK, see, it's like, all right, cats always act like they're hallucinating, like they're seeing <laughs> shit that isn't there. <laughs> Oh, Bridget. See, what the See, fuck was that? Your adoring public missed you so much. She's, You're so excited right now. Okay, what? have a bath. See? They're like completely disconnected from fucking reality. I don't understand them. It's so weird. Oh, so how are you? I am, uh, I think I might be getting an eye infection. Which oh, the recorded, that's not fun. yeah, the recorded stream didn't need to know that, but they know it anyway because Nothing. you know that's the kind of information I shouldn't share, but I do. I just got back from Long Island, maybe half an hour ago. Long Island, Long Island. So I came in, slapped some makeup on my face, said hello to Bridget. It's got on the air yes. for you. I'm. <sighs> She's pretty excited that I'm home. You're you're kind of I don't think you're gonna the very first story tonight is gonna make you wish you hadn't shown up. Oh good. Yeah, I it, it's making me wish I hadn't shown up. It's one of those kind of nights. So But hey awesome. it's it's clothing, so it's something that, you know, you dig. So you you get to be doubly pissed off about this one because you follow the oh. fashion stuff and yeah. I do. You can tell by how awesome I'm dressed. No, you look wonderful. Anyway, here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And Oh Jesus H. Christ. Crazy. This actually hits a little close to home I'm for a friend of mine, which pisses me off too. So we've seen these sites that put out things that are in bad taste or poorly thought out um, branding and whatnot. Oh, you yeah. know this. You already heard this one, didn't you? Yeah. And this is one of those things that I, I I'm kind of sad that. Well, maybe I'm sad. Maybe I'm not that most of the channel isn't, isn't even going to know what this refers to. So mm -hmm. get ready to Google to understand why this is such a bad, bad thing. Why is my video so yellow? I, they miss the red hair. No, I'm just not blue anymore. Yeah, it's not blue anymore. I have lighting now. Yeah. Our hair is still red. I promise. That's yeah, it's yeah. still pretty. Yes. It's wet right now. So that's why it's up. <sighs> so there's there's no real real way I can just this this thing. Oh, Urban Outfitters, you so crazy. No, wait, not crazy. I mean, what the fuck? So horrible? Kent State University vintage sweatshirt with spot splotches that look like bloodstains spark outrage. Now, if you were not aware, back in the 60s, one of the uh, protests, student protests on a university happened at Kent State in Ohio. This resulted in the National Guard, and yes, some of you don't even realize this actually happened. The National Guard opened fire on student protesters. It yeah. was horrific. In fact, I say it hits close to home. A friend of mine named Shauna Silverman, her uncle was one of the people killed at Kent oh State. God. And when they have the Kent State Memorial, she's one of the family members who goes and represents the family there. It was kind of, for the youngsters, it was kind of like the Ferguson thing, except they were also shooting at white people. Yeah. They were kind they of... They were basically shooting at hippies. Yeah. Urban Outfitters is facing a public backlash after offering for sale a vintage Kent State sweatshirt with red blotches that could be interpreted as blood stains. Twitter lit up as people blasted the company for its insensitivity for selling an item citing a university nationally known as the site of the May 4th, 1970 deaths of four students by the Ohio National Guard using during the Vietnam protests. Um, the description of the, get this, 
$129 sweatshirt was washed soft and perfectly broken in. This vintage Kent State sweatshirt is, a, in, is cut in a loose, slouchy fit. Excellent vintage condition. We only have one, so get it. Or and here's the thing. It. it doesn't look like it's in excellent condition. No. Even if it didn't have the horrible historical implications no. that it does. No. It looks like something you use to wax your car. Like, I wouldn't wear that thing around. This is just... But also, it looks like it's spattered with blood and has the name of a university where kids got shot to death for protesting the war. This is where so, I can just see, see a boardroom and it's like, okay, we need some, need some new ideas. Uh, Jack, uh, why don't we do black this year? We found black. Uh, Donnie, um, let's do pastels. No, uh, douchebag Bob. Yeah, let's well, do it's some. Funny to say let's do black because have you seen the Gap's new ad campaign? Yeah, it's all black and you know, white thing. Yeah. Dress normal. Uh, Basically, their new ad campaign is be boring. Yeah. All their windows say black is a color, which technically is untrue. Black. Yeah, it's all colors. No, no, no it's, no. it's the absence black of color. Black is the absence of color. Yeah. White is all color. So they're not even correct <laughs> in their militant blandness. It's so offensive to me on so many levels. However, but, that's a different kind of offensive. Yes, it that's... just offends my delicate sensibilities. This is the real kind. Well, didn't we cover Zara? Did that striped shirt with the Star David? Yeah. That looked like a concentration camp uniform. But this this is just... Someone approved this. That's what's blowing my mind here. Well, I don't think... Like, this wasn't... I guess Urban Outfitters has a portion on their website that is legit vintage clothes. This isn't something they designed. But they... Someone, like, it's an honest-to-God vintage sweatshirt that they were selling, which is crazy to me, because they're selling a 40-year-old sweatshirt that's in shitty condition for $129. Well, yeah, uh, you say that. I do. That's vehemently. That's look at that thing. It's a rag. That's I. Yeah, but I'm sure someone did this on purpose. I honestly don't think they really even understood what they were doing. Really? Because this. There are people in the chat right now asking, oh, this reference is a real event. I thought it was a movie reference. There are people that actually have no idea. And if one of them was a buyer for Urban Outfitters, this could easily have just slipped through the cracks. Holy sh I read about this in social studies, for fuck's sake. And in there's high school. Young song. The Neil Young song, Ohio. Yeah. And was this a movie? Oh, God damn. Oh. oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, but you know what? If they're young enough, like, it happened before you or I were born. Do the words so, decline and fall mean so anything? No, think about... Oh. Jeez it happened before Christ. you or I were born. Think about the amount of stuff that's happened in between them that's probably being taught in a social studies class instead. <laughs> like, it's probably just a two-sentence blip in their book at this point. Oh, jeez. Because so much other stuff has happened that they have to cover. Oh, God. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a major event in American history. It certainly is. But they're probably covering, like, the Challenger disaster instead, like... You know, which someone thought was fireworks. <sighs> well, speaking of kids today, I don't know a graceful segue off this one. Did you do anything stupid when you were a teenager? You know, I was actually kind of a real goody two shoes when I was a teenager. Really? Yeah, I was a really straight laced kid and, um, Kind of waited till my mid thirties to do a bunch of stupid shit, <laughs> which you know. But uh, no, when I was a teenager, I I was in like the church youth group and 
an honor student in Home by Eleven. No, not me. When I was when I when I got my car, I did all the stupid things. Well, see, that's the other thing. I didn't drive until I was like nineteen. I didn't learn. I didn't bother learning to drive till I was in college. Well, you were in you were in the New York area. That's, yeah. What's the so, point? And then a week after I got my license, I got hit and totaled the car. So I didn't drive for another year after that. Well, you know, there. there I, I'm betting that. You weren't hit by one of these. Teens caught making slow getaway on motorized shopping carts. Oh. Clarence, New York. Deputies say it wasn't hard to catch up with two teens who tried to steal motorized shopping carts from the Walmart in Clarence. The Erie County Sheriff's Office was called the Transit Road Store on Thursday after the manager said Dave, uh, Devin... Janinga, Janiga, uh, 19, of East Aurora, and his 70-year-old male accomplice had taken two carts, which are provided for people with disabilities. By the time... These things only go, like, five miles an hour. Yes! Like, where did you think you were going? Yeah, God's sakes! I mean, geez, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you... What they, was the second part of this plan? They because got as far as let's steal the carts and then stopped. Yeah. Can you? I'm just already picturing that chase in my mind across the parking lot with the cop pull over, pull off like two of my. Screw you, pig. <laughs> It's like the scene in uh, Austin Powers. Yeah. Where the guy gets run over by the, the steamroller. Steam yeah. Like three full minutes of going, no. And the steamroller is going like five miles an hour. Get out of the way. No. Of all the fucking things to steal from Walmart. I know. They literally have pretty much everything there. Everything. You could just, just about anything you could want. Yeah, the people are channeled. The, co the cops must be like, really? Is this happening? Yeah, like this, this, you came to Walmart and this is the thing you decided to steal. You could have had food. You could have, in some states, had a gun. You could have had an Xbox. You could literally pick the thing up and run faster. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I love the look on the guy, the kid's face. He's like. What? It's just completely indifferent to the shit. I mean, of all the fucking things. This, this is, this. You could have taken a couple, like an Xbox or some shit. Right. You know, some fucking Pokemon. One of those or? display TVs. You could have grabbed that and booked it, and you would have might have got away. The secret is when you steal stuff, you go out the back of the store. I forget which Police Academy movie it was. I used to love the Police Academy movies when I was a kid. And there was one where like the really nerdy guy joins the police force. And he's riding to the police academy on his little scooter. Yeah, a little like moped. five miles an hour and everyone's honking at him. And he's like, go around, go around. That's these guys. Yeah. Trying to get away from their crime. This is not going to get you laid, guys. Richard, why are you sleeping? The internet missed you. I'm telling you, this, there, there are th things guys do to brag about and thinking it's going to get them laid. This is not one of them. No. You have impressed precisely no one. This this is not making... Th th James Dean would not steal a Walmart motorized shop. It's not something that would happen. And there's not even a back seat to get laid in. No! There's a basket! If you think you can fuck in the basket, you can try... I guess. Yeah, but then the whole thing's going to topple over on right. me. 
It's going to be too front heavy. Uh. You got to like do it on the seat and that's just not comfortable. Because there's the molded plastic. No one wants to mm. fuck a molded plastic. Mm -mm. I like that we're working out the logistics of fucking on a handcart. <laughs> we're classy. Just another service we provide. Uh. We're like, we're like the... We're like the really crummy, low-rent, horrible Mythbusters. <laughs> Speaking we're, of we're service. The, we're the can you fuck it version of Mythbusters. The answer is normally no. But you can try. Speaking of services, and this is a horrible segue, um, I'm not a big fan of funerals. I've been to too many in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. and it's not something you really want. So I understand the whole idea of having a stigma about going into a funeral home. Well, there is a, a funeral home in Michigan who's trying to accommodate people with that stigma in the worst fucking way possible. Funeral home offers drive-through visitation. How? Look at it. You, it's got a big. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yes, Saginaw, Michigan. Most people these days lead very busy lives. That's one reason owners of a local funeral home decided to make saying your final goodbyes a little more convenient. The funeral home now has a drive-through window. Phillips, uh, the the Ivan Phillips, owner of the Paradise Funeral Chapel, unveiled the drive through funeral services on Sunday. I wanted to bring something to Saginaw that we've never had here before. No, I'm pretty sure they've had bad taste in Saginaw, Michigan before. I'm fairly certain that's happened. What if you don't want to use the drive through? What if you actually want like. This has got to be during non viewing hours. If you see the picture there, that's a glass window with the coffin open out to the street and cars just drive by and... Okay, who said that? Um, someone in the channel. Unique. That's how Ronald McDonald's funeral is going to be. Mm -hmm. Does the window open? Because... God, I hope not. Think about the things people could just drive up and do to your loved one. This is just my God. Oh, yeah. Someone pointed out, uh, totally said, what if the victim, what was, it was a car accident victim. Oh, God. Presumably you would opt out of that service. I got to think for a closed casket, you'd opt out of that service, too. Philip said, we wanted to provide convenience and accessibility for our customers for the times and days they don't want to get out of their vehicle. All right. If you're going to a funeral and you can't be ours to get your ass out of your fucking minivan, don't go to the fucking funeral, you jag off. Yeah. Like, if they're not important enough to you to get the fuck out of the car, just don't. Really? Really? Just don't bother. I mean, it's like, I could go, but then I'd have to get out of the car <sighs> and go inside and see all those people and sign the little book. And oh, my like, God, who has the time? Somebody's dead. Really? You dry clean your suit. You dress nice. You go. You pay your fucking respects. You don't. This, this, this not this. I, I just, it baffles me. The funeral director thought this was going to be a great plan. What the fuck? Who is actually asking for this service? Who is actually saying, you know, dad's friends are all busy. Let's, let's just get them the drive through dealy. That, 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 they'll like that. They'll be cool. With Jesus Christ. Although, think about how much better that subplot would have gone in Clerks.
point. This this is a point. Some people just shouldn't be allowed to touch the body. Oh God. I told you I think one of my nieces at my dad's wake asked me, or she just asked, you know, why is only the top half of the casket open? And just like because I talk faster than I think, I said, Oh, because grandpa's not wearing any pants. <laughs> Tara! Jesus like, Christ! Tara! My mom cracked up. She was like, that's really funny. What the fuck? And, uh, yeah, my, I remember, like, my niece was like, what? And she, like, tugs on my sister's sleeve. Mommy, Grandpa's not wearing any pants. And then everybody looks at me, and my sisters are like, how could you do that? And my mom's like, shut up, that was funny. <laughs> like, it broke the tension, you know? Jesus Christ, Tara! It just came out. Holy fuck. You got kids facing the death of a loved one for the first time. You got to bring some levity. I think Uh, I have told that story before. Yes. I don't. My dad would have thought it was funny. uh, I don't actually. I don't really have a good segue into this next one, except. No, I don't have a good segue. This is just plain stupidity. You know how how criminals in movies that if they want to try and avoid getting you know in trouble they'll like swap license plates with another car or something. Yeah, and the first time I ever saw that was in a Disney movie called The North Avenue Irregulars that I was obsessed with when I was a little kid. Well, you know what doesn't work quite so well? Making your own license plate. Mm. Fake Massachusetts license plate fools no one. Chicopee, Massachusetts. Massachusetts state trooper noticed something a little odd about the license plate she spotted on the car in the Interstate 391 in in Chicopee. Upon closer inspection, there was a lot odd about it. The, quote, license plate on the car pulled over at about 7.30 a.m. was actually just a piece of cardboard... In a poor attempt to replicate a real Massachusetts state license plate, the letters and numbers were crudely drawn with a red marker. Can I get a bigger picture? There you go. Now you can see. There you go. Nice big oh. picture here. Well, that's lovely. That's like something a seven-year-old would make. Yeah. Put that up there. That's that's uh, the license. And if your seven-year-old makes you a license plate. That's wonderful. Hang it on your fridge. (laughs) Not on the car. You know what's striking me the most? They actually did. They they actually spelled Massachusetts correctly. Uh, I'm going to be honest and say I'm not sure. Well, I'm going by the way it's spelled in the article. So, oh, well, then, yes, that I've always had trouble with that one. That's that surprised me. They went through the trouble. Uh, After the two T's. And they even, what's killing me, look at the bottom. They even put the state motto at the bottom of They really tried. <laughs> um, the 20-year-old woman driving the vehicle was charged with driving with, with a suspended license and attaching false plates. This was her plan. This was, this was her plan. Having driven on a suspended license for like three years. Yeah. I got pulled over once actually with a suspended license in an unregistered car and no proof of insurance. It's still a mystery to me why I didn't go to jail that day. But, uh, (laughs) just having driven in that condition, the thing you want to do is not call attention to yourself. You want to yes. do the speed limit. You want to use your blinker. Yes. You want to basically be invisible because the second they have a reason to run your plate or pull you over, you're fucked. You just you you want to not draw their attention. But this just you want to not have a hand drawn license plate. And they colored it in. They colored it in with the marker. Just. Oh my God! This is like yeah, I had an expired license plate, but it was a real license plate. So half the time they didn't even bother to run it because they had no reason to. This is one of those 
oh, bless your heart kind of moments. You're just like, you thought this would work. You really, in your heart of hearts, thought this... She was... Several movie, several violations, having suspended license and revoke registration. She's like, well, if I just make my own license plate, that's the thing. Have you ever heard of a cargo cult? No. Okay, what I want to point something out. The channel is saying I got away with it because I'm white. That probably has something to do with it. However... Chaos Nooks, I did not cry. I have never done that when I got pulled over. I have never pulled the crying thing. I'm very polite. I say I'm very sorry for whatever, but I don't do the crying thing. It's overkill. But, and I have a cousin who's a cop, and he says it doesn't work anyway. What, what happened was in World War II, they had these, um, and, and there's some dispute as whether it's an actual thing or not, but there was uh, there were these um, small South Pacific islands, and we'd have we'd have bases stationed over there to fight in the Pacific theater. And what would happen? What, what happened? My, I knocked out my <laughs> my earphone. What happened was um, they would airdrop in supplies to these stations, and the natives would see this happen. So after they after we left those bases. The natives would dress up in they they make their own uniforms, like army uniforms, and thinking that just the act of behaving like soldiers would make things come from the sky. And that's where the term cargo cult comes from. Oh. They think that just by mimicking the actions without understanding the implications of the greater action would make something occur. And that's kind of like this. That would have been a great explanation for the food drops on Lost. <laughs> uh. So you learned something today. You learned something on my show. Educational. That's where the term cargo cult comes from. They also learn crying doesn't work. Crying. At least not if my cousin Mark pulls you over. <sighs> okay. Who, what, do you have your, did you name your Wi-Fi router? Uh, no. Because I did. I, I When named, I had my own, I just left it, the brand name, whatever came up. See, I named mine Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> I named my car Diane. Of course, there there are other routers in my ne in my neighborhood that's like, uh, one of them is, is please turn down that music. I don't know what they mean, me. But people actually, it's like, it's the new passive aggressive right. post-it note is with, with what you name your Wi-Fi router. But that's, you know, that's kind of understandable. And I understand trying to be funny with naming your Wi-Fi router, but there's a time and there's a place. Man who named Wi-Fi hotspot bomb location seat 19E causes long delay for Denver passengers. Oh. Scare aboard a Southwest flight heading for Denver before they ever left the ground in Seattle on Tuesday, on Thursday afternoon. There was a bomb threat that apparently involved that flight. Pastors say someone tried to name a wireless hotspot bomb location seat 19E. That was Why enough. Would Why would you do that? <laughs> that was enough for federal marshals to halt the flight and arrest the man. One woman said he was right behind. She was right behind the suspect. I thought he was in a BAM because he had a guitar case, so I thought he was going for a gig in Boulder or going to college. Man was arrested without incident. There are words you don't say in certain places. One of those words is bomb, and one of those places is an airport. But like, why would you even think that was a good idea? Like, that's just asking for a one-way oh, trip to get Oh, oh, even worse, even worse. Look at the date of when it happened. Oh, come on. It happened on September 11th. Oh, my. Well, you're just a giant festering bag of dicks, aren't you? You don't even say anything that sounds like bomb in an airport. You don't, you don't say mom. You call her mother. You, you, your friend is suddenly named Robert. Hmm. And your mom is mother. Mother, right. Or mama. Right. Or madre. You, you don't even think the word bomb or explosive or gun or anything 
like that. They don't fuck around because, you know, we've had problems with that shit once or twice. He thought, what do you think? This will be hilarious. People will think this is the funniest thing. I'm so smart. No, they won't. They'll hate you. They'll hate, because you know why? You stopped the whole fucking plane, you jackass! And don't sing Barbara Ann. Yes! Cheesy yeah, Mike, don't yes. Do don't sing Barbara Ann. Oh, you can sing Susie Q. Fucking things. Of all the... F She's not having it. You know what? They shouldn't have even arrested him. They should have just said, okay, everybody on this flight, you get five minutes alone with this guy in that small room. Make a line. Make an orderly just queue. Plane. Just let him on the plane. He's locked in an enclosed tube with them for hours. And no, and strangely, nobody will have seen nothing. No cameras. No one just will see. On, just let him on the fucking plane. He can't even call 911! <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Just give Liam Neeson his phone number. Of all the... There, there was no... There was no... What? To, I'm incoherent over this one. I just don't understand why you would think that was a good idea. Like, it's not funny. Yeah, there are some times... It, it doesn't matter how well-adjusted you are. Your brain will think something that even you acknowledge is a crazy fucking thing. You shouldn't do it. It just pops into your head, and immediately you're supposed to go, get back in whatever yeah. dark, deep recess of my psyche you came out of. Yeah. Go back there. You don't do that fucking thing! Oh, Nash, they don't know Barbara Ann. They... What? They're so young... Our audience is fetuses. How do you... You know what our audience is? What? It's the birthing fields from the Matrix. Yeah. We're doing this show for a bunch of pods with fetuses in them. Yep. That's exactly it. You were all fucking... Why didn't you take the fucking red pill? Jackasses. Uh... Okay, see, some people have come up with some actual funny ones, like I Believe I Can Wi-Fi by R. Kelly. Yeah, there was Learning to Wi-Fi by the Foo Fighters. Learning to Wi- Yeah, so some of those are actually fun. Those are Wi-Fi MCA, that's a good one, see? Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. Not Bomb Location Seat 19E. <sighs> Last one tonight is yet another incident of... I we have gotten too complacent as society. How? <sighs> okay. Your gun is not a remote control for life. Oh, woman God, again? again, woman upset at boy playing clarinet. Allegedly points rifle at kids and please. Well, all right. I played the clarinet and that should make some really horrible noises. So... <laughs> Please take a note at how happy this woman is in her mugshot. No one should be this happy in a mugshot. Especially when you've been arrested for pointing a gun at children. Clifton, Colorado. A Western Colorado woman was arrested after she allegedly pointed a rifle at several children in her neighbor's backyard because she didn't like that a boy was playing a clarinet outside. Cheryl Ann F Pfeiffer, uh, 60, was arrested by Mesa County Sheriff's deputies who believes she was drinking before allegedly threatening the children on Wednesday. Newspaper reported the boy told Piper he was playing the clarinet as part of a homework assignment and he could not go inside his grandmother's house because a baby was sleeping. Six other children were in the backyard when they said Piper pointed a gun at them and yelled, quote, fire in the hole as the children ran away. Thank God the rifle was not loaded. Identified as a 7mm Mauser. Pfeiffer was booked into the Mesa County Detention Facility on four Remember counts. Remember when you just turned the hose on kids? In the yes! Right? Nobody got hurt. 
They got wet. They got pissed off. Of course, someone would try to sue you for getting their kids wet. Because yeah. this is... That's the, the kind of world we live in. Yes. But that is that is still... These are kids! But still, they won't die. They... You know what? The, the, this is this is not. <sighs> Kids today are scared, rightfully so, that someone will show up at their school and start shooting at them. I never worried about that when I was a kid. But, I'm from the hood. But this is a thing that could happen. People, kids are scared they're going to go to see a Batman movie. And someone will show up and start shooting at them because this is a thing that fucking happens. They have to do active shooter drills in school now. Eh. Or we, we did, should, fire, we did we, fire drills. We, did, we had tornado drills sometimes. Sometimes. Because we were in South... We were, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't live in a place where the weather tries to kill you. Well, still, we had so. fire drills. We had tornado drills. You'd get under your desk. You'd have to do a lot. Now they have gun drills because this is a thing that would happen. So kids are already a little on edge about this shit. And you point a gun at them. Because I don't care if it was loaded or not. Because you don't like jazz clarinet. Seriously. Look, here's the thing. Nobody likes the clarinet. Nobody likes it. It's the stepping on a cattail of, inter of instruments. Even the bagpipe gets to make fun of the clarinet. Yeah. Like, the only sounds a clarinet can produce are those that come out of a cat when you step on a It's the worst instrument. And when you play it, it makes your front teeth vibrate in the worst way. I don't know why anybody would play this instrument voluntarily. Mm -hmm. I had to play it. I wanted to play the flute. I had to play the clarinet because my sister already owned one. And are you saying you know, how to play the you know how to play the clarinet? I wouldn't say I know how. <laughs> I was really, really bad at it. Because uh, I never practiced. Because it made my teeth vibrate and I had braces. And it was horrible. Jesus Why would you Christ. want me to know how to play the clarinet? I'm not playing the clarinet on the show. <laughs> Ever. I will be happy if... I never have a clarinet in my mouth again. And yeah, that I could understand how that would piss me off, having that noise. But like you said, the hose, number one, is not or like... Or maybe just go out and yell. But the hose is remember a great idea. Remember when the little old lady next door used to just come out and yell at you? That still works. The hose is, number one, not lethal, and number two, hilarious! Because you can watch the little bastards run. It's true. So you're not hurting them, and you're amusing yourself at the same time. And bonus, the clarinet noise stops. Everyone's happy, not the gun. And let's be honest, the little miscreants probably need a bath anyway. <laughs> I live with a nine-year-old boy. He pretty much always yeah. needs a bath. Yeah. Where have your hands been? Yeah. Like, if you're around a kid, unless... You're at a formal event. They probably need a bath. You should just probably even just, if they've had one in the last hour, they probably need a bath. Just keep a they're bucket of Purell shit. nearby just to douse him every hour on the hour, just just to be on the safe side. My nephew comes home from lacrosse practice, and I'm like looking at him, and I'm like, okay, what on you is bruises and what is dirt? And he's like, I don't know. He's just covered in splotches of unknown origin. Just guns are not. Like, okay, well, go in the shower, and then we'll figure out. If you're wounded, you can argue that guns, whatever purpose guns serve, whatever place they serve, one of those purposes, you should never. Guns are not your remote control. They are not your mute button. They are not your fast forward. They are definitely not your stop. No. It's not like. Uh, I guess I guess that's. What? Someone just threatened to make a band camp joke. I will find you and I will kill you. Don't piss her off, people. I don't want to bail one her out again. Of, one of the cons, it was the ghetto con. It was the one where they had to sequester us to protect us from the redneck dark shooters. Yeah. 
Yeah, the bull shooters. Yes, I remember. Because for some reason they put a gaming con in the same hotel as a bull shooting tournament, and like you'd be stuck in an elevator with a dude who literally had a twelve pack under his arm, out of which he was pulling cans and pounding them. Every every blessed time I got in the elevator that weekend, some fucking redneck asked me if I was that band camp girl. Every time. And I'm like, none of you fucking watch Buffy. You can't ask me if I'm Willow. Same actress. Exactly. (laughs) (sighs) Okay, I guess the first thing we learned this week is your gun is not your remote control. If you simply must have one, use it responsibly. Have some safety about it. Keep the fucker locked up when there's not an immediate need for a fucking gun. It is not a way to shut up the bastard kids in your neighborhood. We've learned that, yes, humorous Wi-Fi hotspot names, they can be amusing. But there's there's a time and a place and I don't think that name I don't think that Wi-Fi name would ever be funny. No, that's that's never that's like that that's ne- Like that's not even time and a place. That's just That was a dumb joke, bro. That's not even that's that's not a good joke. Oh, uh... We learned that just because you ha- <sighs> it sucks to lose your license. But just because you really want to drive does not mean you can solve the problem with crayons and construction paper. No. That's, that's not going to be a solution. Arts and crafts cannot, in fact, solve all your problems. It's sad, but it's true. We've learned that paying your respects means making an effort... Get your ass out the car! You fucking asshole! If I ever get invited to a drive-up funeral, I'm real-life unfriending everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Real-life unfriending. (laughs) I like that. That's nice. I've real-life unfriended you. We've learned that there are many things that you can viably steal at the Walmart, the motorized... Carts are not among them. Possibly the least cool option. The least you are not you are never even getting a tiny piece of sex out of that. No. Not even any over the clothes action. That's just not happening. No dick grace. Nothing. Mm-mm. And finally Channing Tatum will not give you a dick grace for that. Nope. And finally we learned. Fashion is many things to many people. But maybe a little history could help. Context. Context is everything. Oh, Jesus Christ. Context is your friend. Yes. Jesus Christ. The fucker with the bomb fucking... God, just fuck. At least be funny! Yeah. If you're gonna be that guy, at least be funny. At least least be... be, At least be Dennis Leary and not Dane Cook. I think these days Dennis Leary is Dane Cook. 